Have you ever wanted to make a kill brick that sets you on fire, then doxes you, then explodes you, then kicks you? Well, obviously you have, because, you know, who doesn't? So the first thing I'll do, okay, is I'll add a part, because it's not a kill brick without the brick. I'll rename the part to kill brick, because that's what it is. And what I'm thinking I'll do is I'll set the color to red, and then I'll just, I'll make it neon. Why not? Okay, so the idea is this, okay? I'll add a script inside the kill brick, which I will name killbrick script. And what I'll do is I'll say script.parent, and script.parent is the killbrick, right? Because script.parent, it's on the top, dot touched, and then we connect that to a function, which gives us the part that touched the killbrick, okay? So the thing we need to do right now is understand if this other part belongs to a player or if it's just something like the base plate, okay? Because if the base plate touches the part, you know, we can't really dox the base plate. So we need to get the player first. So what I do is I say if other part um, dot parent find first child humanoid, right? So if the part's parent has a humanoid, then we know that the other part dot parent is an actual character, okay? So we can make a variable. So local car for character is equal to other part dot parents, okay? And then I'm gonna make another variable but this time it's gonna be the player, okay? Because the character and the player are different things, right? Player is like the data that's associated with you. The player is like the player, right? And character is like the player's like physical model, okay? And the way we get the player is we can just say game.players, um, was a get, pl yeah, get player from character, which will then ask the character, which we have over here, okay? So then I'll give it the character. So the first thing we wanna do is we want to set the player on fire. Okay, now I do have personal beef with fire, but the way you add it is you just go to workspace, click add, type fire, and then you have fire, which if you add inside of a part, there you go. So it shows up inside of whatever part that you add it to. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll say local fire is equal to instance.new fire, like so. Okay, so this will create a new fire item. And then I could do a comma, and then the second parameter is going to be the parent of this new fire, okay? So I want to parent it to um, some part of the player, okay? And every single character model has a part called humanoid root part. So what I'll do is I can just say character, uh, wait for child, humanoid root parts, okay? Like so. So if I play test this right now, and then I step on the part, there we go. My character is now on fire, but he's not dying yet. So let's fix that. So now it's time to brutally murder and explode the player, okay? The way we can explode the player is by adding an item called an explosion, okay? Now, the way explosions work is that it doesn't matter where you add them. What matters is their position, okay? So I can set the position to be like 10, 10, 10, right? And then, and you know, here it is. So the goal is that we want to make a new explosion and then set its position um, to the position of the humanoid root part of the character, right? So we can say local x for explosion, of course, instance dot new explosion. Um, we're going to parent it to, let's just say the character. Why not? Okay. And then we'll say xp um, dot position is equal to care, uh, wait for child, humanoid root part dot position like so. So if I play test this right now, okay, boom, there we go. <laughs> My head is flying. Beautiful. Okay. But what I want to do, right? Like I don't want it to be set on fire and then explode immediately. Like I want it to be set on fire and then wait for a little bit and then explode. Okay. So I'll just add a little wait. So I'll do task.wait and I'll just say one second. Okay. So it's, he's going to be on fire then he's going to wait a second and then explode. Okay. Now you're probably smart enough so that I don't need to actually play test this. You probably know what this is going to look like. So now we can move on to the fun part of doxing the player, okay? Now, the way you get the player's in, um, location, you know, their live address, um, area code, IP, whatever, is use a service called localization service, okay? So I'll say local LS for localization service is equal to game, get service, blah, 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 localization service, all the boring stuff out of the way. What do we do is we'll say LS, colon, right, because we need the function, and we'll say get, um, let me find the correct, get country region for player async, okay, this will return um, the country slash region code according to the player's client IP, okay, wonderful, and all it needs is the player, which we have, 
Okay, that's why I made a variable for the player. There we go. So if I if I were to just print that, okay, then the moment I hit the kill brick, okay, fire, explode, and it prints out CA six times. Okay, so CA is Canada. I'm from Canada, right? I just got doxxed by my own script. But as you can see, it works, so that's very nice. So whenever a player hits a kill brick and dies, I want everyone to know that. And so what I'll do is instead of starter GUI, because I'm just thinking, let's just like pop up like some text that says like, you know, player username is located in, and then we'll like input their code, okay? So I'll do, you know, a screen GUI, which I'll name, I'll call it docs GUI, okay? And then I'll add a text, um, text label like so i will set the size of the text label to be scaled so i'll do one comma one which will scale it to the screen meaning it's going to look the same on every single screen size okay and then i'll just um i do want the text to be big okay because if we're doxing someone that's like a you know pretty big thing i'll set the font to ubuntu okay i'll set it to bold i will set the text scaled to be true and i will also remove the background um I'll just remove the background, okay? So I'll make it transparent. Um, you don't have to do this, but I'll just add a stroke to the text, okay? Make like a, give it like a thickness of like 2.1, sure. And then I'll set the text color to be white. And so let's see how this would work. So if I say player is located in CA, how would that look? Player is located in CA. Yeah, yeah, looks great. Awesome. So what we could do now is I'm going to take this docs UI. And I'm gonna set uh, enable the two faults so that we don't see it, okay? And I'll make a local script inside of this docs GUI, which I will call docs GUI script, okay? Very, very creative naming. I'll make two variables. So for the GUI, local GUI is equal to script.parent, and then local label is equal to GUI, wait for child, text label. And so what I'm thinking we'll do is that. Um, once the player explodes, okay, we're going to fire a remote event because it's a server script, right? We're going to fire a remote event to every single client. And then once we get that event, we're going to have every single client, um, you know, showcase their GUI, which will tell them the player who, you know, got killed and where that player lives, okay? So making an event is very easy. Replicated storage, um, remote event, which I will call kill brick events, like so. I'm going to make a variable for it up here. So local event is equal to game replicated storage wait for child kill brick event i will copy this line to the other script as well and what i'll do is instead of printing the uh, localization service get country region for player what i'll do is i will say event fire all clients so we're going to fire it to everyone okay even the player who um got doxxed okay and what i'm going to do is I'm going to pass the player's name, okay? So the player who got doxxed, I'll say player.name, like so. And then I will pass the their country code, like so, okay? And so inside the local script, I will say events dot on client event uh, connect function, which will give us the, again, it's going to give us the name of the player because we passed it and the player's country code. So I'll say, I'll call these player name and player code. You can name these whatever you want, but, you know, I'll just, I don't know. I just, I name them based on what they actually are, right? Um, so yeah, so event on client event connect function, player name, player code. And so what we could do is we could just say uh, label dot text is equal to player name, okay? Um, is, lo <laughs> is located in player code, okay? So it's going to say player name. So for me, the original lamp is located in CA, okay? And then we're going to say it, set the GUI dot enable to be true so that we can actually see the player's exact location. Um, and we can make it wait three seconds. Okay. So for three seconds, it's going to enable it. Um, and then we're going to say GUI dot disabled or no, <laughs> GUI dot enabled equals false. And for the last thing that we can do, we can say task dot wait for two seconds. And then we can kick the player. Okay. And then for the message, we can say get kill bricks, okay, which I think is a very, very good message. So there's a kill brick. I'm going to walk over it. I'm on fire. I explode. It shows the text. I'm kicked and the text is gone. Wonderful. So yeah, that's how you make a very advanced kill brick. It's very cool. Um, check the description and comments for my course and Discord server. And we are back to basics. Thank you for watching.